Good morning. Praise the Lord. Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. We're so honored we will come and fellowship your presence, hear your word. Thank you, Lord, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who saved us, delivered us, and redeemed us, and gave us everlasting, eternal, abundant life. Lord, we pray for our nation, that each one of our leaders hearken unto you. We thank you, Lord, for a mighty revival our nation, Jesus the Lord, in the United States of America. And Lord, we pray for all the nation world, that every nation has the gospel preached as a witness in the nation. Thank you, Lord, for all those missionaries out there that's preaching Jesus Christ, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for protecting them and meeting all their needs. We give you all the praise and glory, Lord, for anointing them. And Lord, I pray for all the body of Christ. Each and every believer become baptized in the Holy Spirit. To be taught about who they are in Christ. Jesus, and going forth in this life, ruling and reigning in Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for anointing me today. That I'll be able to say and do what you have me say and do. Thank you, Lord, for giving me utter total the ghost. And I pray for all of us as we hear your word and hear the Holy Ghost. We'll go forth and become doers, word led by spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if you have your Bibles, let's our Bibles here in the book of Isaiah. Now, here in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4 and 5, the scripture says here, Surely have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem and strict and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastised our peace upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Now, let's go here to Matthew. Matthew, by the Holy Spirit, is going to refer to this. We just read about in Isaiah. And so here in Matthew chapter 8, the scripture says here, in verse 16 and 17, When evening was come, they brought unto him many that was possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word, and healed all that were sick, that it might fulfill which spoke by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Himself took our infirmities, and bare our sicknesses. Now let's go to 1 Peter, like head way over to the book of Revelation. Now here in 1 Peter, the scripture says here, in chapter 2, Now the Holy Spirit through Peter is going to put our healing in the past tense. And that's what we want to focus on as believers, that we're not trying to get healed, but we already have to see from God's word that we are healed, that Jesus already took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. So he says here in verse 24, Who his own self bare our sins, his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sins should live unrighteous, by whose stripes you were healed. Now let's jump over here to the book of Psalms. And let's go over here to Psalms 119. And let's see what the scripture says over here in Psalm 119. Now, in verse 162, I rejoiced at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. Now, remember when I first heard, after I got born again, 1 Peter 2, 24. In the church where I got saved at, I, I began to attend there. And one night, the pastor, Pastor Elton, was preaching. It was like a midweek service. And while I was preaching, he made the statement, by, but uh, 1 Peter 2, 24 says that by his stripes, or by whose stripes, you were healed. Now, I, as far as I know, I never heard that before, but that thrilled me. I got so excited about that scripture, and I couldn't find First Peter, didn't know there was first or second, but I began to learn. And I took that scripture and said all the time, the bias traps, I'm healed. And that night, it was a midweek service, I got sick before I got home, after I heard that verse of scripture. But I didn't know that Jesus had said in Mark chapter 4 about the sower sows the word. When you hear the word, Satan comes immediately to take it out, and he uses afflictions, persecutions, deceitfulness of riches, lust of other things, and the cares of this world, or the worries of this world. And that's why, one of the reasons why we don't want to pay attention to what's going on in the world except praying and intercede for them. Because we keep taking in the worldly news and trying to take in God's word, that's going to get mixed. It's going to come out with doubt and unbelief and cause a person to stagger. Because the enemy will use the news of the world to confound the believer. And what God did, he gave us his word. And that's why we need to constantly hear God's word and renew our mind to God's word on a constant, consistent basis. Remind yourself, this is what God says. He said himself, took my mind from his bare eye sicknesses. And what we want to do is focus on God's promises. Now, we're going to be able to do that by hearing God's word being taught. Remember Romans 10, 17 says, so then faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And not rejecting the word when we hear it. But receive it and, and, you know, embrace the word of God, the promise of God we hear. Because that's where we get hope. And think about this, what the psalmist said here in his 162. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. And that's what God's promises are. They're great spoil to us. They're like a treasure. And that's how we need to treat them. And then later on, I'm going to hear 3 John, verse 2, where the scripture says, let's just go ahead and read it, right before Revelation in Jude. It's 3 John. There's 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the Gospel of John. Now here in 3 John, the scripture says here in verse 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, 
He was a soul prosperous. Hey, praise God for that, huh? That became a happy verse when I first heard that. I was thrilled to th think about this is what God wished above all. I didn't have anything financially at the time. In fact, I was living with other people. You know, if I hadn't been for God's mercy and their generosity, I would have been staying in my automobile. But I, I was listening to the message being taught in God's Word. I feel like CDs today. Or going on, you know, internet and listening to ministers preach. And I was listening to the laws of prosperity by Brother Cope, and I heard this verse of Scripture. Whoa! That verse was thrilling to me, exciting. Yet, though, I was devastated financially. But I began to rejoice in that verse of Scripture. Oh, I wasn't too sure about the beloved part. I didn't think I was God's beloved. And we are, once we receive Jesus Christ, we're in the beloved. But I kept saying that, sharing it with other Christians, people born again, and got very few takers on it. But I thought, you know, bring it on. If it's prosperity and good health, I want that. And that's what I found out in my covenant, through being taught God's Word, that healing and health, prosperity, is in our covenant. It just became poor, that we through his poverty might be rich. Well, that doesn't mean, someone said, well, that doesn't mean financial prosperity. I said, well, it does to me. And I choose to go with it. You choose not to, that's between you and the Lord, but I'm taking it. And see, we want to side in with God's word. We want to side, we don't take sides against it. And see, so often religion will cause you, if you've been brainwashed with religion or some kind of doctrine that's contrary to God's word, when you hear promises, your religious training will reject it. That's why some of us had to spend some real quality time in God's promise to delete all the doubt and unbelief in religion we've been taught. And that may take a process of time. Whereas for, for someone that never heard God does know he's healed and never heard God doesn't know he should be prosperous, they don't have to delete it. They can just grab a hold as soon as they get saved and begin to run with them. But that was thrilling to me. And, and Mark 11, 23 and 24, where Jesus said, For verily I say unto thee, Who serveth saying this mountain? Be thou removed, and be not cast thee, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall be to say it. Therefore I say to you what things are bizarre when you pray, believe you receive them, you shall have them. Again, I'm sharing 1 Peter 2, 24 with everyone I can. I'm sharing Mark 11, 23 and 24 with everyone I can. And I'm sharing John 3, 3 John verse 2 there, and still doing it with everyone I can. Well, at the time, so you got very few takers. You know, people begin to want to correct me and tell me that doesn't mean good health. That, that's just for the Jewish people. Well, I'm an heir of Abraham's blessing. And so is every born-again child of God. And so we've been made a seed of Abraham and a joint heir with Christ Jesus and the heir of Abraham's blessing. So again, we want to receive the engrafted word when we hear it. And by doing so, it will change the way we think. It will change the way we believe. It will change the way we talk. It will change the way we act. And it will change the way we see ourselves. See, how, how do we see ourselves? When you think of yourself, how do you think of yourself? You think of yourself as healthy, becoming strong, that the best days are ahead of you and not behind you? But they are. The best days God has is ahead of us, starting today and on, by taking God's promises and renewing our mind to God's word and just deleting everything else that would come along to try to rob us of God's blessing. We live in a world that's toxic with unbelief. And so when you do start believing God's promises, see, right where you're at, just start right where you're at. See, when I heard 3 John verse 2, I started, I was living with other people. They're, it's, I'm eating their groceries and their food. I don't have any money at all, unemployed, trying to get a job. And, you know, but I kept listening to those, and still do. I did the day when I was shaving. Kept listening to those messages over and over and over and over. And it started just with cassette tapes on those laws of prosperity. And yet, last week, I ordered another series, the same series. These are in CD, to listen to the same message that I heard when I first got saved. Why? Because it builds faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. If it comes by hearing, it could come by not hearing, right? Well, that's why we want to keep on hearing. See, some people will criticize a minister. They'd say something like about Brother Hagin. Well, you know, once you've heard him, you've heard him. <laughs> that would be a compliment if you're preaching God's Word. And take it as one. If you stay with the same message, with the Word of God, well, I, I got that scripture. And, and uh, her pastor Helton quote, the last part of 1 Peter 2.24. Well, you know, like the Bible says in 1 Peter 2.24, by whose stripes you were healed. That thrilled me. I got so excited at verse of scripture. And then 3 John verse 2, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. See, what we do with those promises when we, when we get them, we treat it like we just found great spoil. 
like we read there in Psalm 119, verse 162. We need to rejoice in those promises and th thank God. And that makes our life start going the way of the promises. And again, that's what God's promises will do for us. They're called exceedingly great and precious promises, that by these we might be partakers, the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of the world through lust. And we need to rejoice at God's promises and rejoice and thank God that we are everything God's Word says we are. And we can do what God's Word says we can do, that we have what His Word says we are. And constantly remind ourselves of that. And just continually hear the Word. See, sometimes you know, you're, you're thinking all the time about your problem. Oh, if I just didn't have this problem. Think about the problem. Wonder why it hasn't left, or whatever. Maybe I wonder why I haven't gotten it yet. No, we're not to think that way. We need to go back and think on God's promise, because the entrance of God's word will bring light. And and see, doubt and unbelief brings darkness. And what Jesus did is far greater than all the darkness of Satan. And we've been translated, King of Azure, translated King of Azure Son, out of that kingdom of darkness when we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord. And thank God for that. And we need to always constantly, consistently remind ourselves every day, feed ourselves on God's Word. Meditating on those promises. Using those promises to begin to say, this is what God's Word says. This is what God's Word says I have. This is what God's Word says I can do. This is what God's Word says I am. And just rejoice in. So when I heard Mark 11, 23 and 24, that thrilled me. And it still does this day. And 3 John verse 2, psh, what? how could it get better than that? That God, I found out that God wished above all things that I prosper. Now, I found out people may not think that way. Just keep loving the people. But don't let anything deter you from believing God. Just have that bulldog ten tenacity. I'm going to grab a hold of God's promises. And when I heard 3 John, 3 John verse 2, I'm thinking, hey, bring it on. This is what belongs to him in Christ Jesus, that God wished above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health. And I took that as financial prosperity and health as physical health and a sound mind as their soul prosper. But there'd be people come along. And try to tell me that doesn't mean financial prosperity. That doesn't mean good health. Well, I, I just didn't go with it. That may not mean it to you, but I took it as mean it to me. And begin to build my life on it. And thank God, I would have never became successful and be able to walk in divine health had I not heard those promises. And that's how we build our life, is on God's promises. We find out what he promised, what he said belonged to us. You know, part of the Bible is prophecy. And part of the Bible is instructions, what to do. Like rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. Those are instructions from God. But also in the Word of God are facts and promises that belong to us. The fact is, by his stripes we are healed. The fact is that he himself took our infirmities and bare our sickness. Because we read that. That's the facts. That's what belongs to us. That's, what, that's how God sees us. And Jesus became poor. Remember 2 Corinthians 8 9? He became poor that we through his poverty might be rich. And that's what we do is we focus on those promises. Father God, I thank you on what your word says. That. You said you wished above all things that are prosper, and I thank you for that. And again, remember that Romans 10, 17. So then faith come up by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We need to always keep on hearing the word being taught to us. Constantly feeding our faith, feeding our spirit man on God's word. And remember, these are scriptures that God reveals to us what his will is for our life. It is God's will that everyone receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And it is God's will that everyone walks in divine health and prosperity. And God made us a seed and an heir of Abraham's blessings in Galatians 3, 14 and 29. And when we see those scriptures in the Old Testament about, it, about Israel, that God promised them these blessings, that you, we might as well put our name there because that belongs to us too. Because what Jesus did, he made us an heir and a seed of Abraham's blessing. And that blessing was upon Abraham. He, you know, God told Abraham to get away from his relatives. Probably one of the reasons was, if I'm going to make you all this, i got to get you away from these people you're around. You see, so often the people around us will try to talk us out of believing God. Like Job's wife, why don't you curse God and die? David's wife, she got upset because he danced so much before the Lord. She didn't like that. It seemingly was embarrassing to her. Well, you may have people like that in your life. But nevertheless... Stay with that word. Just have that bulldog tenacity. When you get a hold of God's promises, I'm not letting go of this. I'm just creating and declaring. Because that's all the hope you and I have is these promises. We don't have anything else to go to that's more powerful. So we got to prove it out. Like Brother Hagin said, you know, I, the, all I had was Mark 11, 23 and 24. 
And I got to learn how to use this. I, I didn't know how to use it. I'm trying to find a minister to tell me how to use it. And does Jesus mean what he said? And we have to realize, I don't have any other hope. I don't have any place else to go to. All I got is God's word. And that's okay. Because that's all it takes. That's all Abraham had. His body's dead. Sarah's body's dead. But they had a promise from God. So what did they do? They went by what God said. Now, their body's talking to them all the time. Tell them how old they are. And you couldn't have children a long time ago, Sarah. What makes you think you can have it now when you're in your 80s? She got to be 91 years old when she had this baby. And Caleb? Caleb and Joshua stood patiently for 40 years on God's promises, I've given you the land. And so what, so what we do, we stand fast. We become determined. No, this is what God said. He said, by his straps I'm healed. He said himself, took my infirmities and bear my sickness. He said he wished above all things that I prosper. He said, see, if God said, now Jesus would say it this way, it is written. It is written. It is written. And when we treat God's promises like we just found great spoil, then we'll begin to see God's word work for our life, in our life. As we treat it respectfully and joyful. I mean, how would we act if we really did believe this is what God said and this is God's will for my life? Then we'd act accordingly. We believe, well, I have the money for the bill in Jesus' name. I have the money. I have the strength because he said I can do all things through Christ. And God promised there in the book of Genesis that man should live to 120. And that's the promise we have. He never took it back. He told us in his word. And we have a promise there that we can run with and begin to decree and declare. To have good health, to be strong, the older you get, the more important it is you fo focus your vision, your desire, your goal upon God promised me 120 years. And I'm going to stay with that. Now, that sounds preposterous to an unrenewed mind. And see, the mind will who do you think you are? After all, now you've already got some issues going on. I reject that in Jesus' name. The Word of God says, I can do all things through Christ. The Word of God says, God's the strength of my heart. And Caleb said, I'm just as strong today as I was 45 years ago. For people that get, it's gotten older, that's a real good confession to make. My youth is renewed like the eagles. I'll run and not worry. I'll walk and not faint. In the midst of feeling like you can't do things, decree and declare what God's Word says about you. And stay with those promises. Don't leave them. And God promised you through Jesus Christ, he'll never leave us. I'll be with you even to the end of the world. So God's not leaving us. He's staying with us. He dwells in each believer. And that's why we can have that assurance that God's word will work, because we have the Holy Spirit in our spirit to teach us, to confirm God's word in our life. And God will. He'll confirm us if we'll stay with it. Think if Abraham finally gave up. And Sarah thought, ah, forget it. We're going to have this baby we'd had a long time ago. They didn't give up. They had the tenacity. The perseverance. They persevered. They were steadfast on God's promises. And how can we rejoice in the Lord? Knowing what God has said about the situation. And not being distracted by the world. All the crazy things going on in the world, they're just there to divide our attention and distract us from following God's word. Stay focused on those promises and just keep rejoicing. And just for, intercede, absolutely. But rejoice now. I'll always be taken care of. Because Jesus will never leave you. And we'd all say amen in church if we heard that. But no, we have to act that way. A, and thank God for that. We have to act that way every day in our life. And telling ourselves, I'm the righteous of God in Christ. The Holy Spirit dwells inside of me. And Father God, I thank you that I am what your word says I am. And you'll stand out among the crowd, if you, the, the church crowd, as you do that. They don't understand it. I, I don't know if I got anybody in my Pentecostal church to believe 3 John verse 2. But I got lots of people came would try to mentor me in doubt and unbelief and, and try to let me know that doesn't mean for you. That doesn't mean finances. I said, well, to you it doesn't mean finances. You know, when I was a kid, my mom cleaned houses. Now, today you make some, you know, pretty some money on it. But then, you know, it was just, hey, it was bad. So anyway, so we get to go to Lucille Mitchell's house. Now, she impressed me because they had a color television, wall-to-wall -wall carpet, and an air conditioner, which I haven't been around. And so I'm, you know, just a little kid. My mom would take me along to torture me, you know, to have me do some work in the house. And she'd have to go to the basement, do the laundry, come back. Well, Lucille Mitchell, she had this cookie jar on her counter. And they had Petri's Farm cookies in it. Now, what we had was homemade. But this is some cool stuff. And she had potato chips in her drawer, bread drawer. And she had a um, ginger ale bottle, a big one, you know, like a liter today, or two liter one. And she'd have that in her refrigerator. With a cork in it. Stop her. 
So I'd go turn on that television, and it, the color wasn't that great. It's kind of like green people. <laughs> looked like my first TV tape. But anyway, so I'd sit down as a little kid. I got those potato chips. I got those cookies, and I got that ginger ale. And I'm drinking that ginger ale out of the bottle and probably doing, you know, backwashing it. But anyway, my mom would come upstairs. She'd catch me watching that TV, eating, eating those chips, and, and, and enjoying those cookies and that in ginger ale. And she'd let me know, if Lucille Mitchell caught you, I'd lose my job. But yet, every time I would be there when Lucille was there, Mrs. Mitchell, she'd always say when she'd get ready to leave, Jesse, now just make yourself at home. Help yourself. Well, I had that invitation. I'm going to take advantage of it. Plus, they had a bathtub. No, we didn't have that. They had a bathtub. And I go fill that up and soak in that till I turn like a little prune. And again, get scolded by mom. Well, this went on for a long time. Summertime, I'd be out of school and have to help my mom sometimes and clean the house. Well, now I'm a teenager. And I just, just walked in the kitchen and reached my hand in a cookie jar to take out one of those Petri's Farm cookies. And my mom came up behind me kind of startled me and said, you know, let me know, leave those alone. I said, well, Mrs. Mitchell said I could have them. I'm not arguing with mom. You couldn't do that. But just remind her what Lucille Mitchell said. Well, she didn't mean it. She just said it. Well, my mom chose to believe she didn't mean it. I chose to believe she did. Now, when I heard the third John, Verse 2 from Brother Colton's Laws of Prosperity cassette tapes. I chose to believe it means finances. And I chose to believe it meant good health. And I chose to believe it meant I had a sound mind. Has my soul prosperous? But many people that I shared those with didn't choose to believe it that way. Because of the religious training, because of doubt and unbelief, and because some people just don't want to change their life. They just want to stay in in a suffering situation that they're in. I mean, Jesus said, will thou be made whole? You're asking God, you've been crippled for 38 years, you won't be healed? You ever been in a wheelchair? Those aren't fun, thank God for them. And Jesus asked this guy, will thou be made whole? And he responds, you know, in other words, I've tried, someone beat me in a pool. Well, at least he's trying. Well, I chose to believe it. And it's amazing when you get promised from God's word, there'll be someone to come along and try to talk you out of it. Because that could be true, because if that was the case, everybody would have it when it came to healing. Everybody would have it when it came to prosperity. Well, is Jesus the truth? Is there anything more truth than Jesus? Is John 3, 16 the truth? Well, certainly. Why don't everybody have him? There's probably 7 billion people on this planet that haven't got born again yet. Does that mean it's not for everybody? No, God's not willing that it should perish. But see, that's that religious doubt and unbelief that will try to stop you from believing God's word. And you just have to keep working on deleting that stuff and receive. And so we read there in Psalm 119, verse 162, we should treat these promises as though we found great spoil. Now I'll tell you, 3 John verse 2, that's my happy verse. It always has been since I first heard it. I'm going to take hold. I, I, I'm, it's God, bring it on, in other words. This is what you said. I'm staying with it. And there'll be plenty of circumstances, doubt and unbelief, that would try to persuade you not to believe God's word, his promises, circumstances, situations, contrary to God's word. But all you have is God's word, so we might as well prove it out now. And my mom, bless her heart, chose to believe that Mrs. Mitchell didn't mean what she said. But I chose to believe Mrs. Mitchell meant what she said. She said I could have the cookies. She said make yourself at home. She didn't say not to eat those chips. She didn't say don't drink that ginger ale. She didn't say don't turn on that TV. She didn't say don't use that bathtub. Never did. All those times I was there, growing up from a little kid, you know, six years old or so, up to probably when I was 17. She would always say to me, Jesse, make yourself at home. And I took it as that. But see, some people don't take God's word that way when they hear it. So that night I heard Pastor Helton say, well, like 1 Peter 2, 24 says, by his stripes you're healed. I chose to believe that. And I got sick before I got home that night. And I got sick again. I got sick again. I got sick again. But I still chose to believe it. They keep saying to myself, that by his stripes I'm healed. I didn't know what stripes meant. You know, I didn't let that throw me off. And when I heard 3 John verse 2, beloved, I didn't think I was God's beloved. But he said he wished above all things that I prosper. And that's why God gave us his promises. Why did God give us his promise? So we could know what his will is for our life. 
If he didn't want us to prosper, he never would have made us an heir of Abraham's blessing. He never would have made us the seed of Abraham. And Jesus did that for us. We're just as much a seed as Israel is when we receive Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And God wanted us to have that blessing that Abraham had. And that was financial. It was God that made Abraham rich in Genesis 13 and 15. It was God that told Abraham to get out of his land, the land he was in, of his fathers, and go somewhere else. And so Abraham obeyed. And Jesus would tell some people, don't go home. Don't go back to your town after they got healed. Maybe it's because there was so much unbelief there, they would talk him out of their, their healing. And see, there will always be someone will come along, love everybody, but someone's going to come along and try to talk you out of it. And we'll be very careful about what you listen to. You know, especially when it comes to the news. I mean, watch sports, a movie, but when it comes to the news, that's all going to come as toxic things to try to show you that God's word isn't working. And we don't, you know, we everybody's suffering. And people just want you to suffer. They want you to give up what you've got. No, we don't do that. We hang on to it. And we embrace God's word. We, we hang on to it with that tenacity, bulldog determination. I'm not letting go of this promise. We've got to prove this out. We have nothing else to go to. And again, that's okay. Because God's word never fails. And that's what we prove out to ourselves. We take the promises. So I got thrilled over Mark 11, 23 when I first heard. And I got thrilled over 1 Peter 2, 24. And I got thrilled over 3 John verse 2. And still am. Again, 3 John verse 2, that's my happy verse. That's my verse of scripture. Ever since I first heard it, I want that. And I didn't know that before. And I grew up in church. Thank God for going to church. But I didn't learn anything. I wasn't taught anything. But as we begin to learn, we can grab a hold of God's promises. And again, like the psalmist said there, that we treat God's word as, to, as though we found grace spoiled. And think about this. That's how we need to look at God's promises. This is like just found buried treasure in the Bible. This is God's will. Been in there all along. And now I've heard it. And now it's my choice to act on or not to act on. When you hear the gospel, it's our choice to receive Jesus the Lord or not. When we hear the gospel, it's our choice to hear the word or not and act upon it. Like Hebrews 4 verse 2 says, the gospel is preached unto them as well as was not. But the word being preached to them did not profit them because they didn't mix faith with it. They heard it, but they didn't act on it. They didn't get thrilled with it. They didn't get excited with it. They didn't think, wow, this is going to change my life. No, they didn't act that way. And Jesus came to his own hometown, and they're not believing him. In other words, works you did in Capernaum do here, and then we'll believe. And Jesus taught us, if you'll believe, you'll see. But the world goes by seeing as believing. No, we believe what the word says. We hang on those exceedingly great precious promises, and we keep rejoicing. And be thankful that we have these promises. How can we rejoice in the midst of a trial? Knowing what God's word says about it. According to the word, I'm delivered. According to the word of God, I'm redeemed. According to the word of God, I'm healed. According to the word of God, I'm prosperous. Father God, we thank you for all of our blessings Jesus bought and paid for, freely gave to us, that every day we're learning more about what Jesus did for us. We thank you, Father, for that. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you're not receiving our newsletter, we mail it out usually every month. You, you, you want to get it. This month is awesome. Coming up in July, you're, if you don't get this, you need to get it. You can write me and say, Brother Rich, send me the newsletter. By writing me at Jesse Rich Ministries, Post Office Box 237170, New York, New York, 1033. If you got prayer requests, and close that too. Talking about Jesus, have you ever received Jesus Christ as your Lord? Maybe you're not sure, or maybe you know you've never done it. The most important thing is receive Jesus Christ as Lord. And then you receive all the Father God has in Christ Jesus. I'm going to read these scriptures to you from Romans chapter 10. It tells us how to do this. Then I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me to receive Jesus Christ, Lord. If you're not sure if you've done it or not, you're not too sure where you stand with God, or you didn't know you never had it, have it ever done it, let's do it today, please. The Bible says here in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, verse 10, and verse 13, that if thou shalt confess thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For at the heart man believe the righteous, and with the mouth confession means salvation. Now verse 13, for whosoever calling him the Lord shall be saved. Real simple. It's asking Jesus to come in our heart. So let's pray this together. They mean the words that you say, and you receive Jesus Christ, your Lord. Just say this after me, please. God, I come to you today to receive Jesus Christ, my Lord. I believe in my heart, and I confess in my mouth that Jesus is the Lord. I believe Jesus crucified, took my sins on the cross, took my judgment to sin, 
died, was buried, and God, you raised him from the dead. Jesus, I receive you today as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. Thank you, Jesus, that now God's my Father and you're my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. You pray that prayer, good for you. I'd like to hear from you. You can write me in and say, I, I received Jesus Christ, my Lord. And I'm going to encourage you, find a church to attend to, that you can start attending, and find out uh, you want a church to preach that Jesus is the only way to heaven. And just let the pastor know, I, I prayed with somebody on, on, uh, on social media, I received Jesus, my Lord. That church and congregation is going to help you start growing and develop spiritually. And get you a Bible. Start reading your Bible. Start into a Gospel of John. It's going to tell you what Jesus did when he was here on this earth. And again, if you'd like to you know, let me know about it, that'd be great too. Really enjoyed being today. So thankful I could be. Till next time, it's Brother Rich Mind. We love you. We're praying for you. And remember, Jesus is always more than enough.